And as we mentioned, U.S. markets responded as expected to the news of the Brexit. The Dow Jones dropping more than 550 points, 564 to be exact. That was after the opening bell this morning. Live look right there, sharply in the red. And joining us now, we've got chief strategist from Bell Point Asset Management, David Nelson. Okay, David, you got to give this to us straight. There are some people sure. who have said the sky is not falling, it has fallen. And there are other people that are saying it's not going to be too bad. Well, it, it, there's going to be a disruption, but there's life after divorce, as you alluded to here. Look, this is their Independence Day. Uh, it's pretty clear uh, that uh, Britain has now voted uh, they want to leave the EU. You know, it's interesting, uh, over the last couple of weeks, some of our international money managers were over there. And it was pretty clear that, that politicians, business leaders, they wanted to maintain the status quo. But when you talk to people on the street, they've been very uncomfortable with uh, being dictated to by Brussels. And this is their way of saying, no mas, they, they want out. They want out. We were saying this is a divorce, but was this a divorce with a prenup? What happens now? Okay. Article 50 comes into play, and it's going to be a long process. It could perhaps take years, although... I think the knee-jerk reaction is uh, some of the leaders in Europe are going to want to punish Britain. But think about it. In the end, life has to go on. Trade has to go on. I think, I think they work it out. It obviously has short-term implications for markets around the world. And we're feeling, we're feeling that today, especially right here in the United States. There are currency movements. We saw a big drop in, in, in uh, the British pound sterling. Uh, oddly enough, the FTSE, uh, Britain's market, is actually faring better than most Why in, in the rest that? of the world. Part of it is because the falling currency, because that's good for their exporters, and I think investors understand that, so they're probably gravitating over there. That could be a short-term phenomenon. Uh, these are generally not one-day events. I'd like to say that it's over right now. They generally, you know, over a period of days, perhaps weeks, this will settle out. I don't think you'll see the very first real meaningful bounce until probably about Tuesday or Wednesday. Why Tuesday or Wednesday? Generally, around three days to wash out. Uh, a lot of people are positioned in the wrong way. This went 180 degrees in the wrong direction. Yeah. The polls, uh, certainly the bookies, had this all wrong. And in the last couple of days, the markets have been up pretty strongly, both in Europe and here in the United States, pricing in a remain vote victory. And then around 10 o'clock, the news started to come in. And it was a pretty scary, uh, uncomfortable mm -hmm. evening. Most of us were up all night. Yeah, a lot of people were up all night. Uh, a lot of heartburn there. I want to ask you also what you're watching for in the coming months. How it translates to the election cycle here in the United States. Mm. If you think about it, there's a very strong parallel, uh, what's happening over there to our election cycle over here. A big part of this vote was about immigration. That's yeah. a big part of our election dynamic right here. And I think it will probably shake up the left and say to themselves, oh my gosh, Donald Trump could be elected. It is possible. We know former Fed Chairman Alan Greenspan said this morning that the euro is failing. Is he right? And what would be the implications if the euro does fail? He's absolutely right. I've long espoused that uh, you can't have a common currency without a cover common government. You've got very diverse nations. You've got very uh, diverse uh, history. And everybody wants their sovereignty. But it would be like here in the United States if, if, if states stopped ignoring, uh, started to ignore federal, federal law. And that's kind of what's happening in the, in the European Union right now. So I think ultimately the euro is doomed. I don't think the eurozone is, is going to disappear. I think what will happen is it'll probably shrink smaller. Britain is not the last to exit. There will be others. Mm. You don't bring good news for people who are in the European Union. If I'm watching you today from yeah. the European Union, I'm one of those countries that's still in. Why should I even stay then? Well, look. This could be a wake-up call. Doesn't mean they can't change. Uh, if I was one of the leaders uh, over there, I'd be taking this message very loudly, very succinctly, and start to make some changes. Uh, the same can be said here. It's a vote that the bureaucracy is, is, is not getting the job done. There's a whole swath of people both there and here in the United States that feel left behind and feel that government has let them down. Uh, politicians are going to have to answer for it here in this country, just as David Cameron answered for it. He uh, resigned within hours. David Nelson, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it.